Hello everybody, my name is Gabe and this is the fourth episode to Let's Make Rust. In this episode we're going to be uh, making a player death so that we can get prepared for things like advanced enemy AI. Okay, so let's get started by making a new folder in our scripts folder called player. Doesn't really matter what you call it. And I'll make a new C sharp script called player. Uh, let's just, yeah, we'll just call it player and open that up. Uh, if you're using Visual Studio, by the way, and things like this pop up, just hit reload all, it's fine. Uh, if you guys are using Mono Develop, uh, I think something like this, uh, it should say something about line endings, just hit convert line endings. Okay, so I'm going to go to the player and just set it up like I regularly do. Okay, so in here I'm going to make a public int called health, which is equal to 100. Uh, I'm also going to make, actually we're going to make this a float, so if we ever have things like bleeding, we can uh, subtract that by time. I'm going to make a update method, so private void update. And in here, I'm going to do uh, check check death, something like that. It's probably a really uh, stupid name, but I'll make a private void here called check death. And in here, we'll do if health is less than or equal to zero, then we're going to call the die method. So I'm going to make another private void here called die. Okay. So now I guess we could do um, a um, a little UI pop-up that shows uh, you're dead or something like that. So I'm gonna right-click anywhere in the hierarchy, uh, go over UI and select. Uh, let's do just an image. Okay, you should see a white box in the um, center of your screen. Uh, what we just did was we created an image which automatically created an, uh, an event system and a canvas which is uh, required for the new UI. So I'm going to stretch this out to the whole screen. So if we go to the game view we could see um, the view of the game so it'll be much easier to uh, see what that'll look like once we do this. So I'm going to select up here anchors and I'm going to hold alt and down here as you could see it's going to stretch it across the entire screen and over here for color I'll just make that maybe like a gray something like that maybe we can lower the alpha a bit no it's fine just a pure gray and I'm gonna right click UI and text and what that'll do oops what actually just right click on the canvas and UI text so it's guaranteed to um, be created on this canvas so if we let's say have multiple canvases for different things like a UI uh, to display health and we have now this canvas to show our uh, death in here I'm just gonna type you are dead and I'm gonna make this uh, a pretty big text be bigger so I'm gonna go in the scene view 2d and we'll just drag this out let's make this about 300 yeah by 50 that should be good I'll center this and 42 okay I'm going to hold alt and select the sound oops not for the image I'm gonna select the text Go to the anchor, hold alt, and select the center, so that will automatically place it in the center for us. I'm going to take the color and I'll make it uh, white. You might notice that it's a little fuzzy. I notice it. I don't know if you guys are on the video. But if we go to canvas and select pixel perfect, that will make it, well, pixel perfect. So you'll get all the nice sharp edges. Uh, I'm going to put an outline on this text, so if I do add component and search for outline, you can see now there's an outline. So right now, one, negative one, so that's kind of the um, X and Y. So if I were to make this two, I'd probably want to make this negative two. So it's a little bigger, but I'll just keep this the way it was before because 
I don't think that that bad. It looks kind of nice. I'm also going to make a button. So if we go right click on the canvas, UI and button. Uh, it's automatically in the center. I'll move the Y down by negative 100 maybe. Yeah, negative 100. So uh, it'll, it's still anchored to the center, just uh, down 100 from the uh, from the center anchor. For the source image, I'm just going to remove that because it's fine if it's just like a, a white block. That's kind of what I want right now. In the button, I'm going to go to text and I'll just change this to respawn. Maybe I'll make this a little bigger so we can see it. See it better. Change it to pure black. And I'm going to rename all these things. So button, I'll just make this uh, respawn button. Text over here, I'll just make it say uh, you are dead text. And for image, we'll just do gray background. Or just background. That's fine. Okay. So, um, oh, and for the canvas, I'll just call this uh, death canvas. Okay, so this should be uh, good for now. I'm going to uncheck this so that when we die, this is just going to get checked programmatically. So back to the script, I'm going to make a public game object. Um, let's see, death canvas. If health is... Okay, so die, we'll just do death canvas stuff, set active true. Okay, and for start, oops, we'll do, I don't know what's happening. Uh, if we do in the start method, I'm going to type death canvas that set active false, so we won't see it. Now this might already work if we go to the player over here and give him the script and attach the death canvas, oops. Apply and hit play. Okay, so I'm in. Uh, the death canvas did not appear. So if I bring my health to zero, there it is. We could now see the um, the death canvas. Okay, so we might as well make the respawn button work. So I'm gonna make down here a public void respawn and I'm gonna make up here a a public vector 3 spawn point which by default I guess is just gonna equal to vector 3.0 but we're gonna change that to how we want it um, in respawn we'll just do death canvas dot set active false and transform dot position is equal to our spawn point okay so in the player I'm gonna set the spawn point now uh, here is a good spot where he already is so I'm just gonna copy his exact position and change that accordingly okay so that should work oh no actually we forgot to um, make the button work so back to the death canvas if we select the button over here on click if we do add and drag in the player for our object and over here where it says no function just select that and go to the player script and respawn um, that's why we made this public so that we can access this from the button so if we hit play and I'll just manually set my health to zero you're dead we're not going to be able to click because our mouse is uh, hidden until we hit escape so I'm gonna go to the player this might uh, be different for you if you have a different player controller or a different uh, version of unity but um, over here for the rigid body first person controller I'm just gonna uncheck lock cursor 
and apply. All right, so if we hit play now and uh, hop into the game and manually set our health to zero, just for now, we should see you are dead. And if I hit respawn, uh, we will be brought back to that place that we were at before. So I'm gonna run uh, a little back this time so that we can see that we spawn back in that place. So I'll bring my health back to zero, respawn, and now we're back in that, in our set spawn point. All right, so uh, I think that's it for today. Uh, next episode, we're gonna be doing advanced AI so that we can um, uh, we can get that going so that we don't have to manually set our health to zero. So we can have some, some challenge right now other than um, they're just kind of following us right now. So yeah, all right, thank you for watching. Um, please subscribe for more content. Uh, if you enjoyed, leave a like. Thank you and have a good one.